Hello and welcome to the Occult Book Review. This week's book is The Skull Experiment and it's based on the Skull Report. This book um, is written by Grant and Jane Solomon in association with the Skull Experimental Group. Um, I'd heard about the Skull Report years ago. Um, I think the first mention of it was when I was reading the, the blog um, Rigorous Intuition, if anyone remembers that. And I kind of took it at face value because it was always pushed as um, scientific evidence. Um, it was kind of experiments done under control conditions. It was the best example of extended consciousness and uh, potentially life after death that we had. So um, I don't know why it took, took me such a long time to get around to actually reading the evidence itself. But anyway, I, <laughs> I have finished it. Um, the Skull Experiment was a series of experiments over five years, uh, roughly 500 experiments with six main uh, mediums. Um, there was Robin and Sandra Foy, um, Alan and uh, De Diana Bennett, and it, it kind of varied then after that. Now, it was kind of monitored by um, three scientists. Now, the, the, the problems begin with these scientists being touted as um, unbiased because the skull experiments took place in the mid 1990s so there's been plenty of time to actually uh, get some research on these scientists and you can you can find you don't have to take my word for it you can find all their details online um, Montague Keane was one of the scientists and he uh, said he was unbiased when he went in to witness the skull experiments but he was actually a channeler himself um there was arthur ellison who kind of was the president of the psychical the society for psychical research and there was dr david fontana who um again said he was unbiased but was someone who had actually advocated for poltergeists occupying uh, tape recorders so Straight away, we have to question what these scientists were looking for, why they were there, and what they actually saw. The experiments, or the, the trances themselves, took place in a, a basement called the Skull Hole. And um, the, these channelings took place in complete darkness. So the scientists who were observing the experiments weren't allowed to use nighttime cameras to see what the mediums were doing. The medium said that what they would do is they would wear um, kind of luminous bracelets which would kind of verify that they weren't moving. And what happened during these seances was that the medium said they got in contact with a team of uh, ghosts or spirits that were scientists in another dimension and these uh, scientists would the mediums would actually channel them they so 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 they said so the mediums were speaking in the in the spirits voices and the scientists who were observing this um were in complete darkness so sometimes uh, apports which are kind of objects that are said to materialize from another dimension would appear they would uh but the mediums wouldn't allow the scientists to search them before they went into the skull hole because uh, they said because they weren't producing ectoplasm there was no need to be searched so you can see straight away there's something uh, potentially um, dodgy going on when this this is one of the things now that I find really problematic and it shows how badly the, the skull experiments have dated um, the ghosts or spirits that they channeled are all really problematic um, racially and in terms of cultural stereotypes so one of the ghosts was Paddy or Patrick the Irish priest who loved a pint of Guinness and would end sentences with phrases like to be sure you know uh, there was White Cloud the Indian chief um, there was Manu who began each uh, channeling sorry his first channeling but my name is Manu I come from the land you know of South America um 
then there are kind of like characters from a Mrs. Marple uh, episode, uh, one particular lady called Mrs. Fletcher. And then there are kind of, oh yeah, there are kind of, um, there's a, an Indian soldier who has uh, helpers who are Victorian street children. So it's all really theatrical and over the top and the phraseology and the knowledge of course of the spirits is kind of outdated now at one point they say in the future we will communicate to you all through your fax machines now i can see that some people will say well Vali came up with an answer to that as well and he said that um whatever elder forces people are getting in touch with will only use um, the context and the associations that the people they're communicating with will know but in this instance of course these people are supposed to be these spirits are supposed to be beyond space and time and um, they're still kind of uh, stuck within the confines of these mediums um, their their knowledge base if you like and again like you know racially the things they say are very very questionable i think but time hasn't just caught up with the skull experiments in terms of um those uh racial stereotypes it's also caught up with the skull experiments in terms of the technology that the mediums used um, some of you can go online and you can find some video and you can find uh, some of the images that the skull experiments produced now I'll come back to this as evidence in a, in a couple of minutes but what, what you'll notice is that the um, images from the spirit world are very like the kind of special effects of a 1980s Doctor Who episode um, from the, the, the stills to the actual um, light effects, which were pushed as kind of some of the best evidence within the experiments themselves. But as uh, people like Richard Wiseman have shown, when, when the experimenters were asked to um, allow someone else to kind of in inspect the room beforehand and put some cameras in, the medium said, no, no, you can't do that. So there, there are, big questions here. Now, let me say, um, the idea of extended consciousness is something that I'm very interested in and I am very open to. And my problem with people pushing the skull experiment is it's clearly very dodgy when, and I question why someone would even mention the skull experiments when we have much, much better evidence out there. You know, if you're as old as I am, you'll remember kind of the whole fuss about um, the Stargate conspiracy back in the mid 1990s. There was a rash of books, books like this one, Tracks in the Psychic Wilderness by uh, Dale Graff, which is a very good book and it gives you uh, pause for thought. Um, Consciousness Beyond Life, which we've spoken about before, I think, by uh, Pim Van Lovell, MD. Great evidence for extended consciousness. Dean Radin, of course, Extended Mind, oh, sorry, Entangled Minds. Um, this book is quite overlooked and I really like it. Uh, the Spiritual Brain, uh, Mario Bugard and uh, Denise O'Leary. And a book that I really think people should read, The Miracle Detective by Randall Sullivan, which is all about um, kind of Marian apparitions and uh, these kind of trances that seem in this book are much more genuine and uh, they seem to be the participants um, allow experiments and they allow scientists to actually really investigate thoroughly there's also kind of a very uh, sinister military element brought up in this book which hasn't really been spoken about before perhaps I'll, I'll talk about it again in another time and of course uh, Jeremy Narby's work uh, The Cosmic Serpent is his most famous book but Intelligence and Nature is another one which shows uh, the, uh, the kind of the whole realm of extended consciousness so there are loads of books out there <clears throat> loads, and there's loads of great evidence that people can pick apart so I don't understand why something as cheesy as the skull experiments is still being uh, touted by kind of occult bloggers and writers i w i really wonder have they actually read the book have they looked at the evidence so the best evidence for the skull reports are these really awful cheesy pictures 
which you know when you look at them for example there's one picture where it's a, a supposedly someone from the spirit world uh, imposing themselves on a photograph and the ghost is wearing glasses so this can only mean that in the spirit world you have opticians which is kind of I don't know what that means it's I don't know, I, I can't even go there anymore, but it's, it just goes to show some of the mistakes that these mediums uh, didn't think about, maybe. Other evidence that the skull, the skull experiments um, and the skull uh, report put forward is um, video evidence, which is, again, you can look at it online, it's, it's not very convincing. Um, so, to say that the best evidence that we have for life after death is the images from the skull report, lockets and uh, medals, which they say appeared in darkness where the mediums weren't allowed to be checked, um, it, it's, it's, it's not good enough in my opinion. Now the three scientists who are generally um, kind of quoted as well, well they, they do believe that the skull experiments were real, but as I've mentioned at the start, they were heavily invested, emotionally invested, in having that um, kind of conclusion anyway. You, you do feel sorry for them because they're quite gullible and you can tell, like, to be fair to the skull, skull experiment book, there are plenty of times in it where the scientists um, are troubled by the mediums not allowing them to uh, have controls on the experiments. So let's get that out of the way, first of all. When people say that the skull experiments were conducted in controlled conditions, they weren't. That's not true at all. The scientists will, they say that quite openly in the book and they profess uh, doubts about what, what they're seeing. They want to believe, but they're saying we can't put this forward as real evidence because the mediums told us that we couldn't bring a camera in. We had to do it in darkness. Um, we weren't allowed to search them. At one point, um, I think it's Montague Keane says, um, of the 500 experiments, every single one of them had a problem. But because there were so many of them, um, that's okay. But that's not, you know, you can't go with that. Like 500 bad experiments does not equal one good experiment. It doesn't work like that. Um, the skull experiments then, came to an end there was more and more pressure on the mediums to uh they, they they kind of conducted a few seances in la in ibiza and in australia i think but again under the same conditions no one was allowed to kind of uh, use cameras uh use nighttime cameras sorry where you could actually see what was going on um people weren't allowed to search them and moving from location to location it didn't really solve the problem so pressure began to build on them and I don't know what happened but they decided that the experiments would have to stop because they said the space-time continuum was being uh, sabotaged by someone in the future and the energies were being disrupted and uh, they couldn't do it anymore it just came to an abrupt end I think it was just people were onto them that's my opinion someone else may have a different opinion but really what I would say to anyone out there who wants to um, look more into this, do buy the book, do read it, because I think it's really important that people should read it, because it's frustrating to see people quote the Skull Report or the Skull Experiments as being the best evidence we have for extended consciousness and life after death. It's really not. It's really not. It's aged very badly, and I think we have much better evidence um, from the channelings at Fatima, I think that's tr a truly an um, unexplainable um, event. Uh, we have the ongoing work of Dean Radin. We have lots of uh, scientists and, if you want to even go there, um, mediums which uh, uh, produce questions that are less easily answered. So... I guess uh, I wasn't expecting to have that kind of reaction to the book. I, I really expected to be blown away and to to add it to the catalogue of evidence you would put forward to people who 
don't believe in extended consciousness. But unfortunately for me, I can see through the skull, rep skull report and the skull experiment very easily. So I'll see you next week for another Occult Book Review. Thanks a million.